Bonjour à tous and Happy New Year! Thank you so much for watching my first video for 2024. I would like to take advantage to wish you and your families good health and a happy and prosperous 2024. I've always said that health is wealth and that's why this is the first thing that I want to wish to you and your families, to this whole community, because I truly believe that this should be our number one priority. And I wanted to thank you for being with me, for watching my videos and for spending time with me, because I know that how precious time is. And when you choose to watch my videos, I truly appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, I wanted to make uh, it like a friendly get ready with me. And I'm going to show you my current skincare routine, the products that I have been enjoying lately. I'm also going to create a look using my favorite products for from 2023, the best makeup that I've used in 2023. And not all of it, of course, because I can't put everything on my face, obviously. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and start doing my skincare routine as I'm talking, and I'm going to be uh, listing all of the products in the description box. I love this toner from Lancome. This is my first step, and I have been enjoying it this uh, winter season. So normally in the morning when I do my skincare routine, I'm usually going to be in um, a different setting and I'm going to apply everything also on my neck and a little bit on my chest. Now currently the products that I use are more expensive, but I usually spend the most of my money on books and then the second one, second expense is going to be skincare, the third expense is going to be fragrances and makeup. So I'm going to move on to this oil from Guerlain. I really love this one in the winter season. For my serum, I'm gonna be using this one from Guerlain. A little goes a long way with this one. I'm gonna show you the consistency. So I usually use only one pump and it's almost like a toner. It is so liquidy like a face toner, but I really like this one. So I don't see the results right away, but over time I have been seeing nice results from this serum from Guerlain. Even though it is quite pricey, I really enjoy Guerlain skincare. A little goes a long way with this one. It is almost feels like um, essence, so it is that liquidy. But I see results from this one and I think that two of my skincare discoveries for 2023 is this serum and then this um, toner from Guerlain. The toner is absolutely gorgeous. Now there's one thing here. The ingredients of this one are different in the US and in Europe. I like the one from the US, which I got with the advent calendar of Lancome. Unfortunately, in Europe, the ingredients are different. I tried it. It's not as good as the US version of the serum. So I like the US version of the serum. I find that it really makes a difference in the way my skin looks, in the way my um, skincare applies after that, and in the way my um, makeup applies and wears during the day. And then the other discovery has been the daily repair serum. This one is so expensive that I was always thinking to myself, should I buy it or not? Because I'm a huge fan of Guerlain skincare. I'm happy that I fin finally purchased it. I would repurchase. But if you only had to buy one product from the Guerlain Real line, I would definitely go for the Double R Renew and Repair Serum. I use this one as part of my nighttime skincare routine. Then I'm going to follow with the Guerlain Eye Cream, again from the Abbey Royal line. This time of the year, right now, I have been enjoying to use Guerlain. And I find that this one, I started using it consistently and I find that it really helps to minimize the fine lines under my eyes. It's a very generous pump, unfortunately, so I have plenty of product that I can apply all over. And then what's left, I usually treat my lines here, but I don't really have them as permanent, only when I frown. But I always take a little moment to massage this a little bit here, and then my skin might get a little bit red from the massage, but I don't mind it. Next, I'm going to move on to a serum from Bioderma that I have been loving. This is truly gorgeous. I use it morning and evening. And then the Double R Serum from Guerlain, I only use it in the evenings.
And then depending on how my skin feels, I might or might not use my La Roche-Posay Cica Plast B5. This is my favorite moisturizer. It beats most of my very expensive moisturizers. I do spend a lot of money on skincare because I find that it works and it's my special moment when I treat myself a little bit and I like to spend more on skincare than makeup. So I might not buy all of the new releases. I'm going to go ahead, see them in store and decide what I want to buy. But when it comes to skincare, I always like to test new products. I like to try and sometimes I might use just a little bit of this product only on the places of my face that feel that might feel a little bit more dry but overall not every day today I'm just going to use a little bit here and next, I always wake up very early in the morning because I like to do my skincare routine and I like this to be my special moment. And then after I'm done with my skincare routine, it is I have one more step left, which is applying the sunscreen. But then in between my skincare routine and my sunscreen, I'm usually going to make myself a cup of coffee. It all depends. But I did work out this morning, so it's a little bit later and that's why I'm going to make a cappuccino and I'm going to be back so I'm going to allow all of these skincare products to soak into my skin for approximately it all depends but approximately five minutes I'm going to do some work maybe check emails reply to your comments chat a little bit with you I love chatting with you leave me a comment let me know how did you spend your holidays for my sunscreen, I am going to use this one from La Roche-Posay and this one is actually the one that is made in Europe. So La Roche-Posay, unfortunately, they have different products in Europe and the US. But this is one of my favorite sunscreens and they keep reformulating it from time to time. So a couple of years ago, I did not like it. It was irritating my skin, but this version, the last version is a really good one. And makeup applies beautifully on top of this one. I'm going to show you a close-up of the consistency as well. We are moving on to the makeup part of this video and I wanted to address something, uh, just wanted to tell you, please wear dedicated sunscreen under your foundation. I know that sometimes it doesn't look in the best possible way, but there are products that look good under makeup. I'm going to leave a list in the description box to sunscreens that look very well and that perform very well under makeup because I have been receiving messages lately of people watching my previous videos where I apply sunscreen and then makeup and asking me why do I apply sunscreen when my foundation obviously has SPF 25. You should be wearing a dedicated SPF every single day, even in the winter time. I think that this is one of the best anti-aging tips that you can get. Now for my foundation, I'm going to be using my trusted and loved Numero de Chanel foundation, which is one of my most used foundations of 2023 and I am going to create today the so-called cloud skin because the glass skin hasn't been that much trending lately but we are into the other trend which I think has been around for so many years for decades in Europe because in Europe really the glass skin um, trend didn't really happen and people have been creating this kind of look, the cloud skin, the so-called cloud skin. It's nothing new as every new trend. This is nothing new. It is just um, a beautiful, soft, radiant matte complexion that is poreless and gorgeous. I like the Numero 1 de Chanel foundation because it is very nourishing, especially now for the winter months. This is one of my favorite products. It really helps to nourish the skin and it looks like skin and you can apply a thin layer and get a very light coverage or you can build it up up to a medium coverage. Let's say light medium coverage, but it's buildable and this is one of the best things about this foundation. One of the most common questions that I usually get is why foundation peels off and doesn't look flawless. Uh, this most often happens in the winter. It's either because you did not exfoliate your skin. You have to exfoliate your skin on a regular basis because if your skin is smooth, then the skincare is going to apply smoothly on your skin. Then the SPF and then the foundation, they are going to go on smoothly if the skin is nice and exfoliated. So make sure to exfoliate not just once in a while, but make sure to exfoliate on a regular basis. And then 
One of the other reasons might be because in the winter we usually go for more moisturizing, more hydrating products and then, then they don't usually wear layer well with foundations that have that are water-based. So it's usually good to consider the products that you are using. And another trick that you can try is really wait for a few minutes after you do your skincare, wait for a few minutes and then apply your sunscreen and then wait for five to 10 minutes and then apply your foundation. This is ideally what can happen, but of course we can't always do that uh, for working professionals, this is not very possible. So that's why you will have to just find the products that work well together. But most often the reason why foundation doesn't look good is because you don't take good care of your skin or it can be because products just don't work well together. If you want them to work really well together, then you have to give them some time to, to absorb into your skin. Otherwise, you might get this peeling effect. Another tip that I have for you is instead of a brush, if you don't have the time to wait in the morning, this is what I do, uh, use a sponge and just press the foundation into the skin. That's why you're not getting this dragging motion from the brush and the foundation is going to apply more evenly. Next, we're moving on to, I'm going to apply a little bit of concealer. Concealer, I'm going to be using my Fitu Sisley Concealer. It is one of my favorite concealers for under the eyes. And it also comes with a very convenient brush. That allows you to place the concealer exactly where you need it. And what's left, I'm going to apply a little bit on my eyelids. Next, we're moving on to my powder and I'm going to be using the Viral Prisma Libre from Givenchy. Now, I was very surprised that this year this powder became, pow became viral because I have been mentioning this powder since I started my YouTube channel. It's not new to me. I think that it's new now. It Somehow people discovered it this year but i have been mentioning this powder since the beginning of my youtube channel probably five or six years ago when i started doing youtube videos i have been mentioning this powder it really is the best powder to erase pores but something that a lot of people don't mention right now is that this powder is actually i would suggest this powder for people who have oily skin or combination skin or if you're struggling with dilated pores it really helps to erase pores it really helps to give you this very flawless poreless complexion but i would not suggest this powder for people who have dry skin short term and long term and um I think that it's very important when it comes to skincare and when it comes to beautiful skin i think that the number one thing that people forget is your lifestyle is always going to affect the condition of your skin and how your skin looks what you eat is going to show up on your skin. I think this is one thing that people forget. The second thing is going to be your skincare routine. If you're consistent and if you choose the right products that work for you and that your skin needs. And number three, equally important, is going to be the makeup products that you use. So one product does not work for everyone just because it became viral. And I kind of feel a little bit... Hmm, people with dry skin promoting this powder and saying that it works so well. I would not suggest this for dry skin. I used to have, oops, puff fell, so I have to use something different. So it's very important to choose the right product. So for people who have dry skin, I would suggest the Westman Atelier Compact Powder or the Hermes Powder if you have fair skin tone or the Sisley Loose Powder, but not this one. This is for people who have oily skin, long term. It's important what you put on your skin. So if you have dry skin, even though this is like a viral powder at the moment, it's good for people who have oily skin. Now moving on to my blush, I have two favorite blushes that were released this year. Um, maybe three blushes, but I actually like the illuminating blush powder from Chanel, Fantasy de Chanel, but this one was more like a highlighter and a blush, two in a one. But the two actual blushes that I loved in 2023 are these two. One is Chanel and the other one is Dior. Dior is permanent, so that's why I'm going to be using the Dior blush because it is so beautiful. And at the same time, you can still find it, you can still use it. It is just a beautiful 
neutral blush perfect for everyday use and I rarely find beautiful neutral blushes. But I really like this one. For eyes, I'm going to be using Chanel's Holiday Eyeshadow Palette because I think that it's perfect for everyday looks and also for festive looks. I think that this was one of the um, very beautiful creations of 2023. There were a lot of beautiful eyeshadow palettes. I just feel like using this one at the moment because soon nobody's going to be talking about this eyeshadow palette. Now Chanel's um, spring makeup collection includes Eclat de Nuit um, eyeshadow palette. This is Les Quatre Ombres a new Le Quatre Ombre from, from Chanel. They also have two new eyeliners. I purchased one of the eyeliners and the eyeshadow palette. I maybe uh, will get then the other eyeliner as well. I'm going to be reviewing this eyeshadow palette, but it has somewhat, sim some of the colors I feel are similar to this palette. They are beautiful. Eclat de Nuit is definitely a very timeless eyeshadow palette. I wouldn't say that this necessarily gives me the spring vibes. It gives me the vibes of uh, just a timeless eyeshadow palette. And I used to have one limited edition eyeshadow palette from a summer makeup collection. I think that it's going to be similar to Eclat de Nuit, but when I receive it, I'm going to do a full review of the eyeshadow palette. I love to layer the colors in this eyeshadow palette. I like to play with the different effects that you can create by layering the colors because the powders are very high quality. They are not too shimmery. Of course, they are. They have some festive vibe to them, but you can safely wear them to the office as well. You can safely wear this eyeshadow palette and this amount of shimmer I think is acceptable for everyday use. And I really like when I layer the different colors, I really love the effects that I'm going to get. So I'm usually going to create very quick makeup looks with this eyeshadow palette. This is something that I enjoy. And also it has beautiful one and done eye colors as well. So I'm using a big brush, my favorite brush for one and done eye color. And I'm just going to go ahead and layer. And by layering the colors, you can create a look within a couple of minutes and it's going to be usually very interesting. The color that I get is very interesting because I just play around with the colors and layer them. And since the pigmentation is great, they layer beautifully. You know that sometimes when you layer colors that don't have the best pigmentation and the best grip to the eye, you might end up not seeing the colors. Here I really like that you can be creative and elegant at the same time. And then I'd usually go ahead and apply a little bit of black hole eyeliner just in the roots of the lashes and the outer part of my eye. When it comes to lipstick, I have so many favorite lipsticks and lipstick is the product that I change most often in my makeup look. I'm quite consistent in the way I want to look. Um, for everyday looks, but the lipstick I love to change and I have so many lipsticks I'd say that I have quite impressive lipstick collection and I think that I may do a separate video showing you some of my most favorite and most worn iconic lip colors that I think are going to suit so many different people. For today's look, I think I'm going to go with my Chanel Rouge Allure in 206 and I'm going to combine this with a deeper lip liner in 164. I think that, I haven't tried this combination, but I think it's going to look nice. So I usually like to apply the lipstick and then I'm going to go in with the lip liner so that I can shape my lips the way I want them to be. And I'm usually going to do the top lip, the cupid's bow. I'm not going to define it too much but I'm going to go more round. Okay, so this is it. And then a touch of Mademoiselle just in the middle. When I'm doing my makeup for everyday looks, I really like to create my own style by layering the colors. And I like to have more options, but I also like to create unique colors by layering the makeup products that I have. Then once I have the lipstick on, I'm always going to go back and apply a little bit more blush because this is the time when I see exactly how much blush I can have on my face. So I'm going to apply just a little bit more. And as a final step, I'm going to add my favorite Gucci highlighter. I love this highlighter. It is my favorite. It is the 
absolute number one highlighter for 2023. I don't even doubt this is the best one that I have used in 2023. I love it so much and I usually like to apply it when I finish my whole makeup routine. I just like to add it on top of everything. A little bit just uh, adds so much life to the complexion. For brows, the um, brow pencil that I have been using the whole year has been from Floresis. I think that their brow pencils are exceptional quality. And I think that I haven't changed it. I have a few more, but I think that the only one that I reach for is Floresis. It's just such a beautiful product. And this is going to be my finished look. It's very beautiful for every day because it is quite flawless and poreless and beautiful. It is not completely matte, but it has this radiant matte. Uh, the skin is radiant matte and I really like it. Last but not least, I want to share with you my current favorite perfume, which I think is the number one fragrance for me personally for 2023. I don't share fragrance content here on YouTube, and I'm planning to change that um, this year. I want to share more fragrance content because I'm a huge fragrance lover. And even though I don't show perfumes, I always try the latest releases, both luxury and niche. I have a good fragrance collection, I always try to keep it not too big, not way too big, but at the same time, I love to buy new perfumes. The, my favorite one is Le Vie Belle L'Extrait. I think that this is the best release of 2023 and I've tried almost everything. I think that this perfume is quite unique and unfortunately it's limited edition. This one has the classic, um, very seductive La Vie Belle DNA, but it has oud added in the notes and it develops beautifully. Now, this is one of the most long lasting perfumes in my collection. It lasts so well. The projection is excellent. And this is the first La Vie Belle fragrance that I would actually wear also in the office. It is a statement perfume and it develops beautifully during the day. I even ordered a backup of this one because I want to have it and it's been my signature perfume. This is the first, actually my first full size bottle of La Vie Belle. And then I had a moment with La Vie Belle line, so I purchased, I think currently I have almost all of the La Vie Belle perfumes, this one being my favorite. I think that it's quite extraordinary because of the combination of iris, rose, and oud in this perfume. And the oud here is not your typical heavy oud that you're going to find in a lot of niche fragrances that makes the fragrance almost suffocating. But this one, the oud here adds a lot of depth character to the perfume, but the whole dry down of the of the perfume. It has such a beautiful praline on my skin, which is not listed in the notes, but I tell you that this is the most, this perfume has the most beautiful dry down, the most beautiful, gorgeous, absolutely stunning praline. So definitely go ahead and try this one, but try it on your skin. It doesn't work on, um, on a paper when you spray it or on clothes. Try it on your skin because this one develops so beautifully. Um, and I am going to share um, an unpopular opinion about um, a fragrance release. I think that this year a lot of people um, said that the best fragrance release was um, Valaya, was Valaya from Perfums de Merli. And I think that a lot of the fragrance content creators, they love Perfums de Merli so much. I, it's one of my favorite niche brands as well. I adore Perfums de Merli, but for me personally, Valaya was a little bit of a disappointment. It's not that I don't like it, but for me, it was too linear. And I think that I expected more from Perfums de Merli, from a brand like Perfums de Merli. They create some of my favorite perfumes. Um, but Valaya for me, it was just a plain citrus fragrance that didn't have a lot of character, didn't have a lot of development. And I, I did not love it. Another fragrance that I want to mention that was released towards the end of the year, um, like I think around September, was the Dolce & Gabbana Devotion. It is a very um, unique scent. I think that it's worth mentioning because this one smells like Italian housewife. And I, I say this in the best possible way. So it almost smells like Italian cookie shop, Italian pasticceria, but during the holiday season, during um, April, uh, let's say during Easter, it just has this scent of candy orange peel with a lot of vanilla and there are 
certain desserts in Italy that smell exactly like this. And I, I loved this perfume, but I didn't, still haven't bought a full-size bottle of it. I am now thinking of buying a 30 ml of this one because it really smells like Italian pasticceria, Italian candy shop. Um, an Italian cafe, but during the holiday season, during the time when they make the most delicious, the most amazing desserts. So I can see this perfume being worn by the perfect mom, housewife for a family occasion. It just smells so incredibly cozy, delicious. There's nothing dangerous about this perfume. It just smells like cookies. It just smells like, mm, I wanna eat it. I wanna eat it. And this is the only thing that is stopping me from buying this perfume because as much as I love this dessert, it's just like, I, I wonder, I have a something stopping me because I'm thinking, well, do I want, I, you know my connection with Italy and I think to myself, every time when I smell this one, I think to myself, but I don't want to smell like a candy shop, like I don't want to smell like a, um, like a dessert. It's, um, a true celebration of Italian housewife. It's the perfect Italian housewife. And once again, in the best possible way. I just don't know if I want to, like I would give this one to my perfect nonna in Italy, that, you know, grandma, that I think it's gonna, it's gonna smell amazing on a housewife and for a family occasion. But like, let's say if I want to feel sexy, seductive, feminine, I wear this one, I'd wear this one. I wouldn't wear Devotion from Dolce & Gabbana, even though it's worth mentioning, because I think that a lot of people are going to like it. The only thing, as I said, what's stopping me is just like, smells like candy shop, smells like um, like Italian pasticceria. So this is the only reason why I probably would not. I will buy, uh, but I will wear it at home because I don't want to smell like, like a dessert outside. Okay, friends, so that was all for today's video. Thank you so much for spending time with me and for watching my video. And I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, bye.